This is the new design of my isomorphic keyboard piano overlay. The major changes from the last version are the shape of the keys and the new color scheme. Some chords were difficult to finger on the previous version, and this was because they required curling one's fingers under one's hand to reach the notes closer to one's body. This led me to the realization that, ergonomically, the classic Halberstadt keyboard got something very right. Each note is available across a large distance in the vertical or front-to-back direction. That fact accommodates the 3D shape of the hand. Every note is easily available to any finger as long as it can reach the appropriate horizontal position. My previous design requires fingers to find both the horizontal and vertical position of the key. In order to make the keys on my keyboard overlay available across a larger vertical distance, I changed the layout to one where the adjacent intervals to the upper and lower right were the augmented unison and minor second, respectively, instead of the major second and minor second of the previous version. That change in layout, given the same spacing of the piano keys underneath, stretched the keys vertically and squished them horizontally. I also optimized that layout by switching from a square-like layout to a hexagonal one. A square-based layout, where the shapes of the keys were actually parallelograms, with adjacent augmented unisons and minor seconds, resulted in a situation where the thin tips of the keys were effectively wasted space, since one couldn't press the key there without bumping adjacent keys. A hexagonally-based layout, however, widens up the tips, allowing for the full length of the key to be useful. So far, this layout has completely solved the fingering issues of the previous version. The color scheme was a bit of a breakthrough for me on the problem of coloring isomorphic keyboards in general. It was clear to me that, since isomorphic keyboards are uniformly shaped, players would need a visual anchor to help them find their way around. It was also clear to me that specific notes should be colored the same in each octave. Trying to minimize the number of colors always led to visual biases towards certain intervals highlighted by similarly colored keys. Coloring every note differently could require an arbitrarily large number of colors, which is a problem in the first place, and at high enough numbers of colors, some would certainly become difficult to distinguish from others. The scheme at which I've arrived instead takes advantage of the fact that some key tops are going to have the same colors as others, and uses that visual cue to highlight a musically relevant relationship. In this new scheme, key tops with the same color are of the same generic diatonic pitch class. That means that D-flat, D, and D-sharp all have the same color, in this case orange. This has what I found to be a remarkable benefit where one is given a strong visual cue not just for where one is generally on the keyboard, but also for where one is in terms of the melodic and harmonic structure of a given scale. For example, when reaching for, say, a third above a given tonic, you can be sure that if the key you're reaching for is two colors away from that given note, then it is indeed a third away. You can then use the specific shape relating the two notes to determine the quality of the interval. To put it another way, from a blue key top to a green key top is always some type of C to some type of E, that is, a third. And whether you start it on a C or C sharp is less important than whether the E you're reaching for is a major third or a minor third above the type of C you're reaching from. This removes any bias a player might develop towards specific flat or sharp keys, and instead highlights what is musically important. Not the absolute pitches themselves, but instead the relationship between those pitches. The most bias this scheme has is its assigning of a specific color to each generic pitch class, which is, while arbitrary, not a big deal in my opinion. If someone really hates the idea of all the Ds being orange, they can go ahead and assign different colors to each generic pitch class and still reap the benefits of this type of system. I've uploaded the 3D files to Thingiverse if you'd like to print one out yourself. If you'd like to purchase one from me, please send me an email. If you like this project and video, please consider pledging a dollar per video on Patreon. Every little bit gets me closer to being able to work on projects like this full time. You'll get your name listed at the end of my videos and we'll have access to previews of projects I'm working on. Thanks again.